Now we talk about various factors which can affect the gas exchange. These factors are carbon dioxide, temperature, pH. Carbon dioxide, as we know, when it, in, it is increased, it actually decreases the uh, saturation of, uh, it, it actually decreases the oxygen tension, which result in the capacity of hemoglobin for oxygen, for, for carrying oxygen is reduced. This result in um, release of oxygen molecules um, towards the blood. Um, second is temperature. Temperature, uh, if, if it is increased, that is a rise in temperature, decreases the oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin. So, if temperature is um, increased, then oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin is decreased and hemoglobin will release oxygen. And we know that the airways are sending a moist and warm air inside the lung. Um, this warmth result in uh, decrease in oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin and hemoglobin molecules releases oxygen which is then taken up by the capillaries. Uh, pH, if pH declines, uh, oxygen carrying capacity uh, also declines. So, uh, because actually what happened that hydrogen ions, because when we know that when pH goes down, actually hydrogen ions are released in solution. These hydrogen ions actually bind to hemoglobin uh, to some part of it to decrease its oxygen carrying capacity. So, if pH is decreased, then uh, oxygen carrying capacity will also, of the hemoglobin molecule will also decrease. Now, the lung capacity. The human lungs, while fully expanded, have a capacity of about 5 liters. Uh, but actually, when we are sleeping or we are at rest, lungs are uh, only um, exchanging a half, half a liter of the air. So, very much less. While exercising, this, um, this exchange may increase up to 3.5 liters. It means that there is a 1.5 liter um, residual, vo residual volume um, that cannot be expelled in any case. Inhalation, as we know, sans uh, lene ka jo process hai. Inhalation is um, 15 to 20 um, cycles per minute. If we are exercising, this may increase up to 30 cycles. And that is we breathe rather than 15 to 20 times per minute, we breathe for 30 times per minute. So, when we are exercising, um, then the lung, then the capacity of lungs is differently utilized and in a more efficient way. So, this is about the lung capacities. Now, changes in the composition of the uh, breathe, breathe air. When we breathe air in and then this is expelled out. What is the difference? Um, this air actually, in, we are talking about the difference of inhaled air and the exhaled air. So that we can find out that what is the difference in the percent saturation. Air when it is entering inside the lungs is 21% saturated with oxygen. When it goes out, it is 16% saturated. So there is a 4% decrease. Uh, carbon dioxide is 0.04 percent saturated in the air, uh, but when air goes out, this is 4 percent saturated with carbon dioxide. Nitrogen, as we know, has nothing to do with the respiration. When air comes in, it is saturated by uh, nitrogen by 9, 79 percent, and when it goes out, that is exhaled air, also have 79 percent saturation. The water vapors, these are variable initially when they enter inside the uh, lungs. That is in inhaled air, they are variable. But when they go out, the air is saturated with the water vapors. Because we know that the whole, uh, all the surfaces which are present inside the um, uh, respiratory tract, they are all moist. So when air goes out, it is saturated with water vapor. So this was all about respiration. Respiration in plants, in animals, differences between cellular and organismic respiration and then uh, a detail about the human respiratory system.